in we will be discussing positional measures of central tendency. There are two of them. One is median and the other is moles. We will start our discussion with median. Median is roughly speaking the value towards the center of the distribution. But a small heads up, before you try to spot the value towards the center, you should sort the distribution in increasing or decreasing order. Now, Median is one of the easiest central tendency to spot, but there's a small complication here. Suppose you have odd number of observations. It's pretty easy to spot the value towards the center. But what if you have even number of observations? There are only two values to the center. Which one should we pick? What is A? And let's call the second one B. In case of number distributions, the best option is A plus B by 2 or the arithmetic mean of A and B. But not all distributions are number distributions, right? What if we have a nominal or ordinal scale data? Then the, we are in trouble. So in that case, we can either use A, the lowest number, or B, the highest number among those two. In case they are equal, our life is so simple. But if they are not equal, we'll have to use any one of these. And choice of which rule to use is also contextual. Suppose you are having a tie with your brother about median age in your family. And as you know, younger brothers, they always like to win. So you might have to give up or choose the youngest one's age as the winner. So what I'm saying is it depends on the context, it depends on the type of distribution you're dealing with. Anyway, let's look at some examples. First example is distribution 2, 3, 3, 5, 6. Now, it's easily noted that there are five observations and when there are five observations, the value towards the sender is the third value, and that's three. It's a pretty easy guess, right? But in case the distribution gets very big, it will be hard to spot the central value in one look like this. So what we would do is we'll take n by 2, and if this is an odd number, what happens is this will be something 0.5. Something 0.5. So what you have to do is, Choose the number just after that number that is nothing but x plus 1. So in this case, 5 by 2 is 2.5. Now take this, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. We spot the third value, which is nothing but our median. Going forward, look at this particular example. And... It's easy to spot that there are six observations and therefore by our rule we are supposed to choose the middle two and work on it. But before you proceed, notice one thing. It's not sorted yet. So the first thing we have to do is sort this entire distribution which is 1, 3, 5, 6, 6, 8. Now the values towards the center is 5 and 6. And as we know, the best course of action in case of numerical distribution is to find the arithmetic mean of these two numbers. That is 5 plus 6 by 2 or 5.5. Otherwise, we can choose the minimum number 5 or otherwise we can choose the maximum number 6 among these two. The third example looks very similar to the first example, right? There are five observations, and the first three obs observations are the same. But the other two observations are very, very different. Interesting. But still, if you notice, there are still five observations uh, in total, and the value towards the middle is three. The median doesn't change. Very interesting. The extreme values have changed, but the median hasn't been affected by it. Let's look at how to find median of a frequency distribution. First step is to find total number of observations and then find n by 2. Now, 
sort your observations and tabulate it. Here's the third column to calculate something called cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency of an observation xi is nothing but sum of frequencies up to that observation. We'll see that more clearly once we do an example. Next step is to spot the cumulative frequency that is just greater than n by 2. And the corresponding value of x will be your median. Too many words. Let's give it a shot with an example. We are given a frequency distribution. And I have drawn a table for us with the first column as the values of x and second column as frequency. The cumulative frequency is calculated this way. In the first row, we simply copy the frequency. In the second row, what we would do is we will bring this here and add the frequency of the second row. That is 20. So we are left with 42. In the third row, we will add 42 with frequency of the third row and thereby we get 52. And in the fourth row, we add frequency of the cumulative frequency of the third row along with frequency of the fourth row which will give us 82. Interesting, if you notice, what we essentially did is 22 plus 20 plus 10 plus 30. So, the cumulative frequency of the last row will be nothing but the total number of observations of x. Now we have got total number of observations and now life is better. n by 2 is equal to 82 by 2 or 41. The third condition says spot the x with cumulative frequency just greater than n by 2. And cumulative frequency just greater than n by 2 here is 42. And therefore corresponding value of x which is nothing but 13 will be our median. Interesting. One problem done. Let's do, take a look at another one. This one looks particularly interesting because instead of one value, we have a interval in place of x. Let's see how we can go ahead with it. Let's go with the normal rule itself. First, let's calculate the cumulative frequency and the total number of observations. So for that I drew the table. Now calculating cumulative frequency in the first row I am simply going to copy the frequency. In the second row I am going to add cumulative frequency of the previous row along with the frequency of that row that is 5 plus 3 8 and in the third row I am going to add 8 plus 10 18 and in the fourth row cumulative frequency of the previous row plus frequency of that row which is nothing but 58 and in the last row we have 58 plus 6 is equal to 64. So total number of observations is 64 and n by 2 will be equal to 32. The number just above 32 is going one by one 58 in cumulative frequency and therefore the median we can't say median value we can say median class maybe so the median class is nothing but median class is nothing but 50 to 60 hmm but what if we need a single value for median in that case we'll have to use a small formula the first step towards finding the median, a single value of, in the case of classes, is finding the median class. And then, suppose your median class is something like L to K. It's, in the previous case, we had 50 to 60. So, suppose your median class is L to K. Then, we will use this formula, L plus h which is nothing but magnitude of median class or h is equal to k minus l divided by frequency of the median class into n by 2 total number of observations divided by 2 minus cumulative frequency of the class 
preceding the median class. We will have to find the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class we have spotted. And then n, as we know, is the total number of observations. That's a scary formula, isn't it? Don't worry, once you see it applied in this particular distribution, you'll see that it's not too much of hard work. We already found that the median class of this particular distribution is 50 to 60. And let's find the parameters for our equation. First parameter is the lower limit for median class, which is 50 to 60, and therefore lower limit is 50. Frequency of the median class is here, 30. And magnitude of median class, as I told you, the maximum number minus the minimum number, which is equal to 10. So x is equal to 10. Cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class. So we need to find the cumulative frequency of the class, which is this, preceding the median class, which is this class, and corresponding cumulative frequency is 18. So we have t is equal to 18. We already found that total number of observations is equal to 64. Applying this in the formula, we have L is 50 plus H is 10 and frequency is 30 into N by 2, 64 by 2 or 32 minus 18, which is equal to, simplifying, you have 32 minus 18 is 14, and the zero zeros and goes of zero zeros goes of so fifty plus fourteen by three, and this is nothing but fifty four point six six seven. At last, we got a single value for median. Interesting formula, right? Though the formula looked a bit big and scary, calculation was much simpler. Let's look at some more examples to get some better insight about median. Sixth example simply lists some names and in fact we can notice that these are names of states in India. Can we order them in any way with simply these names? We can't. And in fact we notice that since there is no order, nominal scale which this particular distribution belongs to, we cannot find the median. Let's take a look at another one. Lie, truth, 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 and there are many lies. Can we find the median of this particular distribution? In fact, lie and truth are comparable. One of them is better than the other or worse than the other. This is contextual. Yet, let me choose to make lie less than truth. In that case, if I sort it, I'll have lie, lie, and then there is one more lie here. You have truth, 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 truth. There are seven observations, and the value towards the middle is truth. So, the median is truth. Let's do one more interesting example. It involves the same word lie, but lie is not comparable with fire. In this case, in the previous case, it was ordinal scale, and in this case, it has the same word has turned into nominal scale. Interesting observations, right? So that we cannot find median of this particular distribution either. Now. Let's take a look at the other personal central tendency, that's mod. Mod is pretty easy to spot because it's the number which is most frequent in the entire distribution. Sometimes, if you write it in terms of frequency distribution, that's a number with highest frequency. You can simply note it with a glance and as easy as median. It's the finding mod is as easy as median. But there is a small problem here. 
a distribution may have two values of x with highest frequency. In that case, you will have two modes. Such distributions are called bimodal, and then in case there are more than two, they are called multimodal. So, what I'm saying is, mod is not too well defined. A distribution may have one, two, three, or more modes. Let's look at some examples. First example looks very simple, right? There are two twos, and two is the only number with a frequency two. The rest of them have frequency one, so therefore mod is equal to two. The next one, we have six with frequency one, 33 with frequency two, 11 with frequency one, 22 again with frequency 2, 44 with frequency 1. Therefore, we can conclude that mod is equal to 33 and 22. It's bimodal. Whoa, that question looks very tough, isn't it? There are almost 100 data points because frequency adds up to some, approximately adds up to 100. But don't worry, spotting mod is simply by observation you can find that 25 is the highest frequency and therefore mod is 6. In case of class interval, we are going to use a trick similar to that we applied for median. We will first spot the model class, that is the class with highest frequency and then we are going to apply a particular formula and this formula is much simpler than median formula L which is the minimum value in model class H is the magnitude of model class and we already saw that H is equal to XK plus 1 minus XK and fk is the frequency of the model class, fk minus 1 is the frequency of the class prior to model class, fk plus 1 is the frequency of the class after model class. Let's take a look at an example before we wind up the discussion on mod. Quickly by looking at this distribution, we can spot that the model class is 40 to 50 with highest frequency 28 and therefore we have model class as 40 to 50 and the highest frequency is 28. Frequency just before the model class is 12 and frequency just after the model class is 24. Lower limit for the model class it can be easily spotted as 40 and magnitude is 50 minus 40 is equal to 10. Apply all these values to the formula to get the model value. Mod is equal to L, which is 40, plus H is 10, into highest frequency is 28, minus the frequency just before it is 12, divided by 2 into Fk, that is, 2 into 28 minus 12 frequency just before the model value, model frequency, minus frequency just after the model frequency, that is 24. And you get the final answer as 40 plus 10 into 28 minus 12 is 16. 10 into 16 is 160 divided by 2 into 28 is 56. 56 minus 12 is 44. 44 minus 24 is 20. So you are left with 40 plus cancelling out you have 8. So 48. So the model value is found to be 48. How ideal is median and mod? 
If you look at the table, it's clear that arithmetic mean is a clear winner compared to median and mode. But all three arithmetic mean, which we would usually refer to as mean because it's the easiest and most useful of all the means, mean, median, and mode are all three easy to understand and calculate in comparison to geometric mean and harmonic mean. And None of them are ideal. Arithmetic mean has the most ticks, but it is affected by extreme observation. While median and mode are least affected by extreme observation, but has its own weakness. For example, mode is not rigidly defined. You may have more than one mode for the same distribution. 